Hi friends, um, you know the hope is uh, in the next couple weeks, maybe even less, we're going to be able to um, uh, get out of our homes and uh, or uh, you know where we go to work and come right back home. We're going to be able to get out into society a little bit more. So here's something I, I, I want us to maybe think about. Uh, many of us are married or many of us came from families where our mom and dad were married or at least at some point. Um, but others of us have been in marriage and gone through the pains of divorce or the loss of a loved one. In some way or some form, we're all connected uh, to marriage. We want to be married one day or we see the value of marriage and the beauty of it. I'm not married, but I, I, I'm I, very much connected to a marriage in so many ways, right? As a pastor, as a son, as a father of the community here and so on. So here's what I want you uh, to ponder is that... Um, there's a, a connection between the sacrament of marriage, uh, which in some form or another, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, living out and grappling with and, uh, uh, and rubbing elbows up against, you know, in our own homes right now. Um, we're missing, we're hurting from, and so on, or hoping for. There's a connection between the sacrament of marriage lived out and the sacrament of the Eucharist lived out. And Kimberly Hahn um, talks about this in uh, one of her teachings. She's the wife of uh, Dr. Scott Hahn, um, who's a great biblical scholar, one of my favorite people to read. Uh, they both have the same goal, uh, the, the sacrament of marriage and the sacrament of uh the Eucharist both have the same goal, and they're similar in several aspects. Um, they both have the same goal in that both of them are gifts from God given to us to help us get to heaven. The Eucharist seems obvious, right? But, but marriage, yes. God gives us another person just like he gives himself to us in the Eucharist so that he can journey with us in the Eucharist to heaven, so that we have somebody to journey with us on the way to heaven. There are many comparisons and um, aspects that allow that to be lived out. The total gift of self is another aspect. Now think about this. Both sacraments express holy communion. Again, and we understand Eucharist as a holy communion, and we capitalize both of those words, holy communion, right? It's a communion with one who is holy. But so is marriage supposed to be a holy communion of two persons, right? The, the, the husband and the wife, who as if they're living out the sacrament of marriage the way God intended it to be, they help one another, A, become more holy, but they also then help one another get to the one who is holiness itself. Another thing is that they both create a family bond of love. A family bond of love. Now think about this with the Eucharist. When we're receiving the Eucharist, we're not actually just receiving the Son, because the Son is never without the Father and the Holy Spirit, a trinity of persons, right? And so we enter into a family bond of love. But let's extend that. We also, because we're receiving the same body of Christ as everyone in front of us and behind us and around us in the Eucharist at Mass, we're, we're connected to a family bond of love. And also in regards to marriage, that when a husband and wife join together in the most intimate act that they can express as human beings, uh, the, the, the marriage act, the, the, the bond of love, the, the marital embrace, right? They're creating right there a family. Husband and wife are family together. But in that bond of love, something comes forward, a new life, and then maybe another life, and a life after that. And physically, we have another bond of love, a family bond of love. And just like that family of the church 
uh, journey together and work together to get one another to heaven. So it is then with mom and dad and the children. That if they're living out God's design for the human family, it not only created a family bond of love, but that family bond of love helps to get them to heaven. And that love is a sacrificial love. That the very nature of both sacraments is a sacrificial nature of love. And again, we get that when it comes to the Eucharist, right? That here it is, Jesus, uh, and we're entering into this one eternal sacrifice of love of Jesus upon the cross. And the Father pouring his love into the Son, and the Son resurrecting through the power of the Holy Spirit, and then imparting his Spirit upon the church, right? All in which Christ and God is emptying himself into the other, into us, a sacrifice of his life so that we might have life. And so it is the, the, and should be what marriage is. That the husband and wife spend their lives sacrificing themselves as individuals for the sake of the other pouring out their lives into the life of their spouse so that their spouse might live. And, and then it extends from there, right? So the mom and the dad then pour out the love that they receive from God the Father and that they get from one another into the life of their children. But here's a mistake that we make. Just like going to church, we don't find life in the community in and of itself. We find it first in Christ and then share it in one another. It's the same that goes into marriage. The mother and the father can't find life only in their children. That can't be their first place. They first find it in God and God bringing them together and then filling up with God and then self-emptying that love into the other and then that overflows into the life of the children. And then the mom and the dad and the husband and wife can fulfill the purpose of the marriage and get their children to heaven. How many times have we heard from our own selves and echoes of this in so many other people's lives when people say, my, my, my son and my daughter no longer practice their faith, no longer go to church, no longer believe in God. We have to get back to that proper order. No matter how old your children are, no matter how old you are, no matter how old your grandchildren are. It's that sacrificial nature of love. Receiving it first in the Eucharist and then giving it to our spouses and then it overflowing from our lives into the lives of our children. But you see where I'm going with this? The family can't fulfill its purpose can't fulfill its purpose that God has given it unless it fulfills its relationship with God in the Eucharist. And here we are as so many families running away from the Eucharist and that family bond of love. And then we expect to be able to give to our children and to our families that which we're not receiving in the church. Also, gifts for which we need to give thanks. Both sacraments are gifts for which we need to give thanks. In fact, the Eucharist, Eucharisteion, literally means thanksgiving, right? And so many of us have taken the Eucharist for granted. And the reason why I'm doing this during this time of COVID-19 in particular is that we're away from the Eucharist. And what is happening inside of us? We're desiring the Eucharist again. We're desiring communion with, the, with Christ. We're desiring that family bond of love. We're desiring to be in the midst of a community that is all attached through receiving the Eucharist together, all members of that one body. And we need to give thanks for that again, that we have that desire again, that passion, that longing. And that then we take that and allow it to bring us back to our home. And then bring this to our own homes. The homes of our hearts, of our spouses and our children. And then finally, the seventh one, 
All of this is only possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, we try to create our families on our own power. And then we try to keep them together on our own power. And then when things disintegrate, we mourn them alone. Right? And we blame ourselves. When all along we have, have, we have had access to the greatest power in this universe and available to our families and to our spouses and to ourselves. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit that that bread and wine are made into the body and blood of Christ that can feed our souls and fulfill our purpose and get us to our heavenly homeland as individuals. But it's by that same power of the Holy Spirit that we receive when we receive Christ in the Eucharist that brings us back to life and then gives us the love that we only, that can only bring life to our spouses and that can only make our love sacrificial and that can only um, be enough to be poured out from our hearts into our spouses and with our spouses poured into the lives of our children. And only that love of the Holy Spirit is what our children really need not just our own human love. And in this time in which we have been separated from the sacrament of the Eucharist, it's a time to remember again what a gift the Eucharist is and that it has the same purpose as marriage and then to unite those two again when we're finally able to come back to our churches and come back to the goal that God gave each one of us, no matter our state of life, to rescue marriages, to rescue our families, and to put us back on the track that the Eucharist feeds us with, and we can feed ourselves from the Eucharist, the ones we love the most. Until next time, friends.